Hello, I'm Dennis Smith. I'd like to speak to you today about three fire chiefs. Uh, the first is John T. O'Hagan, who was the head of the fire department of New York during the building of the World Trade Centers. He was very much against the building of these two towers because he understood the way the engineers and the architects did not at the time, that the great vast open spaces on each floor of these buildings were not compartmentalized and consequently they increased the fire load hazard on each floor. Uh, he didn't win that battle, although he was very vociferous in opposing the buildings uh, because the governor was the brother of the bank that uh, the bank president that uh, financed the towers. That's uh, Nelson Rockefeller was governor at the time. But John T. O'Hagan uh, spoke his mind. He let everybody know that he thought that these towers were unsafe and uh, he did not win the battle, unfortunately. But he will be remembered for calling them out at the time. And then there's Dan Nigro, a man of extraordinary quiet intelligence and great fortitude of mind, who, um, after Pete Gancy, the then chief of department, was killed on 9-11, was asked to be the chief of department. And it felt to him the awesome and, and very sad responsibility, really, to rebuild FDNY to the greatness that it had before that terrible day and the loss of 343 firefighters and uh, more than 100 FDNY apparatus. <clears throat> but he rebuilt it and he did a great job and FDNY is today uh, still the great exemplary uh, fire department. It is the place where when uh, professors and students look uh, for organizations that are really well managed, they look at FDNY because it's managed by Dan Nigro and people like him. And then there's a third fire chief who has um, been dead a long, long time. He was fire chief from 1899 to 1912. And his name was Edward Croker, uh, chief of FDNY. And he said something that I'd like to share with you. It's the whole purpose of this video. Uh, uh, Chief Broker said this. I have no ambition in this world but one, and that is to be a fireman. The position may, in the eyes of some, appear to be a lowly one. But we who know the work which a fireman has to do believe that his is a noble calling. There's an adage which says, nothing can be destroyed except by fire. We strive to preserve from destruction the wealth of the world, which is the product of the industry of man, necessary for the comfort of both the rich and the poor. We are the defenders from fire of the art which has beautified the world the product of the genius of men and the means of refinement of mankind. But above all, our proudest endeavor is to save lives of people, the work of God himself. Under the impulse of such thoughts, the nobility of the occupation thrills us and stimulates us to deeds of great daring even at the supreme sacrifice. Such considerations may not strike the average mind, but they are sufficient to fill to the limit our ambition in life and to make us serve the general purpose of human society. Those words, you know, are written in the style of 19th century American English. Uh, but they convey still 
the traits of character that exists in the firefighters uh, who go out every day to answer the alarm, to go into the great unknown, into the utter darkness, into the whirling smoke, into the great environment of imminent danger, possibly death, to do their job, and to do their job with the kind of valor that is spoken of here. Valor is not an easy thing to talk about. But I know after so many years of writing and participating and being in various positions in various fire organizations, that valor is the basis of what we do. And we should be very proud of it. And I just wanted to remind you of Chief Croker's words, because they're worth remembering. Thanks so much.